But first, Mullingar's Niall Breslin, the singer of Brezzy, formerly of the Blizzards, is in London at the moment and much of this has been happening literally on his doorstep. Niall, you're very welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. How are you? Can you paint a picture for us? Um, I can't, actually. It's the most shocking thing I've ever witnessed in my life. It's, it's, um, it's, it's literally zombies. These people are, like, they don't seem like real people at all. And it's, um, you know, I, I have a six, uh, friend with a six-year-old daughter living in Clapham and I, I mean, I texted him last night to see if he was okay, and he's the kind of guy who's pretty laid back, doesn't get upset. And he goes, I am absolutely terrified. My six-year-old daughter's under her bed screaming. It's, it's beyond, like, I mean, I live in quite a nice area of London, um, and what's happening now is, um, as you move up from Chalk Farm, or, which where I am, which is kind of quite, city, uh, quite more in the city, up towards Hampstead, where it's quite affluent, people feel they can go up to people's affluent houses and start burning them. It's just... You know, like, the, regardless of whether these people are a target or anything, there's kids in the houses, you know, and it's 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 shocking. It's really, it's, it's like, it's, you know, I'm, I'm actually lost words with some mm. of the things I've seen so far. Is there an element of class warfare going on? There is up here. Uh, not so much in Croydon and, and Clapham Junction. It's quite, um, you know, Clapham Junction would be predominantly Irish and South African and Australian and and up here would be uh, it, it's very much it's a, a much more English area where you know as you move up to Hampstead Heath and places like that it gets it gets very 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 um, affluent and uh, it like we went down to Chalk Farm yesterday like literally <clears throat> just outside our house but we went down at about seven o'clock and it was like like a tsunami it was just the whole place was deserted so you we knew something was coming it was like when they pulled the waves pulled back and all the shops managers were outside on their phone and you knew they were obviously being warned by the police that these people were coming and literally out of nowhere we were standing there and you just saw hordes of kids walking up Camden towards shop firm and like the riot police just came out and we were stuck in between them so we were like right obviously we're getting out of here and kind of ran past the, the riot police and the riot police knew we weren't obviously involved in any way and there's just this big standoff but the police were incredible there you know, I mean, I'm reading so much negative stuff about them and I, I'm, it's making me very angry because I saw a girl, a lady no more than five foot five with a shield and, right, and like, basically a police, a police woman running at these people. Like, so if you're telling me the police are cowards and not mm. doing anything about it, I don't know who's saying that because what I've seen, it was, it was incredible. I think to the credit of the police from the images we've seen on television, they seem to be grossly outnumbered. Like, like you wouldn't believe we um, the Tesco right beside us was being looted last night so we like like literally just crossed, crossed the road from my house and like so we rang the police um, like there were these people these kids were 12 like seriously they were 10, 10 or 12 years of age there was about 20 of them we rang the police and the police arrived three police guys arrived and I could see the way they were acting there was like even though they were kids they were going to turn on them and you know, this will come out and it'll, people will start giving out about it, but the police just let, let loose on them, just went in and started swinging and hitting. I saw hit one kid get hit in the face and fall on the ground and crack his head, and the police hop on the kid again and hit him again. And, like, the thing is now, it's the police are getting so angry that this is what's happening, and, you know, where that's not right either. Yeah, it sounds very brutal, the way you describe it there. It, 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 this is like, this is what, obviously, you're not going to see on Sky News and BBC. They don't want the police to look like they're... But the police, in their defence, really don't have a... Like, when I saw the three of them stand there, it was either they took it on or, or they, were, they would have got mobbed. They would have literally got mobbed. It, they had to... You know, I think that particular policeman went over the top. And then people who were there started shouting at the policeman to stop, like even mm. people who weren't involved. And then But you, you said in your opening remarks that these people who are carrying out the disorder are like zombies. So is there a sense that they don't care what the police say or what the rule of law it's, says. It's lawless. There's no, absolutely no... Unfortunately, with these kids, there's no consequences for what they're doing. They can't be sent to jail. They, they can only be arrested and held for 24 hours. Uh, it's, it's a mark of kind of kudos and respect for them if, if they get sent to jail. So they're just taking over. I mean, I, <clears throat> what's happened in Hackney yesterday, which is where I was during the day, and it was starting during the day, and, and just as I left, these Turkish... Um, like shop owners, because um, Hackney is like this particular street of Hackney, which is predominantly Turkish and uh, and Arab, and they um, they came out with their like with their knives and their bats, and they stood up in front of the kids and said, "If the police aren't going to do anything about it, you're not ruining my livelihood, you're not ruining my business." And they had a full full scale, you know, charge at, and these kids obviously who are cowards ran away, and mm. 
and you know what that's what scares me more than anything at the moment is people are going to start turning on them like just the the average guy who lives in a house with his family who is protecting his family are going to turn on them and some guy's going to go out with a gun with god knows what and just it's going to it, that's when things are going to get very very complicated are you nervous because it sounds like law and order is breaking down altogether I, um i think when we were first told the police came in and told us and told us that that they were predominantly just concentrating on curries and uh, looting and robbing and, and that was fine and not that it was fine but it was like they, they, they had no interest in in actual hurting um, like people and then you, you start realise you started burning houses and it's like there was one particular lady that lives I think about five about five doors down from us that they actually went into her house she was asleep she lives there on her own they went into her house with a petrol bomb and said give me your money or I will burn your house she oh gave them God. the money and they still threw the petrol bomb into her kitchen. And I just watched on the news there two minutes ago, this girl, this lady who walks past her house every morning. She's, she's probably about 90 years of age. So it's, you know, if you can do that to a defenseless lady, there's absolutely no reason why they're not going to come into a family home and, and do the same thing. And yeah, there's a level of it. callousness there that is, isn't even in, in the realm of humanity. It's, it's beneath it's, it completely. It's not. It's, and I know, as, as you said there before, it's, it's you know, Kabul is quieter. Um, you know, this is a, a civilised Western world city that, you know, there's a huge, like, there's, there's a lot deeper problem here than somebody rioting. If the kids are that dis, disjointed from society, there's something severe, severely wrong. In, in, in the world and somebody has to look at it. Incidentally, you referred to kids throughout um, y- y- your interview here today, but are there any adults stoking this up or, or are they behind the scenes? No, of course, yeah, there's definitely, um, there's definitely, I mean, older teenagers, like 19, 20, and, um, like, this, the one thing people have to understand with this, this is completely and utterly organised because each each um, riot that's happening is happening in the furthest part away from each other in London, like Croydon, just after Croydon, which is very far south, and um, um, Chalk Farm happened, which is the complete opposite end of the city, so nobody could get there. Like, the actual emergency ser- services couldn't get up. And then just as that happened, Clapham happened, which is south again. So, like, it's just literally like a ping-pong of ambulance and, and police trying to get to places. So somebody's organising it. And, you know, if, if the likes of MI5 can find out, like, terrorist plots all over the world, I'm sure they can find out who's organising this. And as soon as they find them, I mean, I, I'm obviously not going to say what I'd like to see happen, but, you know, it's, it's terrifying. And it's, I'm, a, I'm a big guy, I'm well able to look after myself, and I'm very intimidated mm. in, in, in the city at the moment. Well, the level of CCTV monitoring in London is unparalleled across the world, so there's certainly plenty of scope to gather evidence together, but I suppose when people look back and wonder why it happened, you know, in in other parts of the world there may be an incendiary atmosphere because of racial tensions or religious tensions or whatever the catalyst might be. Can you think of anything that would have... Okay, there there was a triggering event involving that fatal shooting, but... Was there an, an an unrest underlying all along, in your view? Yeah, uh, in, in London, there's um, it's it, it's not like anywhere I've ever been in terms of the teenagers are, um, it, it literally is like a different race of people. They, you know, it's it's a, like they they are in a different complete. It's a like a totally different generation. I mean, even even on, in Ireland and and like when I grew up, there was always a link between generations. There was always some kind of link there that kind of kept kept you together or you know whatever it was here it just seems like there's people and then there's these and like when i say it like i'm talking about you know delinquents mm. not they, they, there's no consequence for what they do and i think what happened is with the shooting in tottenham and um, there was two guys into we asked two guys yesterday two kids on the side street why they were rioting and they didn't even know somebody was shot you know it's got nothing to do with it it's and in, and in saying that as well, these are kids from very, very poor, like, like some of the poverty in, in this city is, is never, ever documented. It's really, really bad. Some of these kids are going into Curry's and coming home with a TV for their mother who can't afford to feed them, who's going to go brilliant, you know. Mm. Society has been treating me like crap all my life. You know, if, if I can take something, I will. So it's, it's a real vicious circle. And what's happened now in, in, um, with the, 
the riots, and especially in Birmingham and Liverpool, it's it's just the mob mentality. It's it's not. Nobody knows what's ha- why yeah, they're doing it. It sounds like an instinctive pack or mob mentality, all right, rather than anything that's premeditated, at least for the masses rather than the leadership, anyway. Yeah, and no. that's, that's, that's what's scary about it. But I think, you know, London's been through a lot, a lot of tough times, and I think, you know, this... And they were talking about Brixton in the 80s when the, the riots and why there were so much... They weren't as bad. It's because there wasn't Twitter. There wasn't Facebook. This has been organised mm. on social networks. Niall, stay safe and thank you very much for taking our call. Anytime, cheers. Thanks indeed. That's Mullingar's Niall Breslin. Brezzy, as he's now known uh, formerly of the Blizzards.